Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For those who would just tune in to this message, we are in Austin. And I want to give a message that starts a series. We're going to call it Frustrations of the Light Worker in the New Energy. I start with the premise. For 30 years, I have been channeling through my partner leading up to the shift, being part of it and now beyond. If you take a look at the channels and the messages, they have shifted with the times. At first, telling you to get ready for a new human. In 1993, I said in a book that my partner published reluctantly that there would be no Armageddon. That you're headed instead for something that you never expected, a potential, a possibility. The metaphor would be that which is an improved consciousness of the planet through evolvement of things that had never evolved before. The consciousness would carry an evolved transparency of thought, and there would be integrity and honesty in many of the things you thought would never, never happen. And you'd start to see them in mass. You'd start to see them in government. Finally, you'd start to see them in corporate. These were the messages back then to get ready for something different. At the crux of 2012, there was celebration. And the channel started to shift. The marker of 2012 had been passed as we had expected because it was in the field. There was the field contains the energy of potential. If consciousness is energy and there are many making plans and thinking of certain things in certain ways, it's in the field. These are the things that intuition can begin to pick up. The field is where remote viewing occurs. That which is a potential based on what people are planning. Negative and positive. Many times there are those who will go into that field and the only things they will see are negative things. Because that's the bias they carry into it from living in an old energy. They expect things to be negative, therefore they'll find the negative potentials, and then they'll never occur. And when you find prophecy from those that never occurs, or doesn't occur over and over when they say it's a going to occur, you know what's going on, don't you? And we spoke of that. We told you of a consciousness that would start to change among old souls. And it would start to radically change for those who would accept that that was possible. That they could change their lives and their reality. The reality. That what they could imagine would create energy, work with the potentials in the field, and they could start manifesting things like the healing they wanted for their bodies with longer life that they wanted because these are the things that were appropriate for them but they had never understood they were in control before and now they do the premise is that there's also help and we told you last time we sat in front of a group that the eye-rolling part is that there's more light on this planet and it's coming from the nodes and the nulls, the time capsules that we're supposed to open and have at the right time. If you want more about that, it's very common that we have channeled and given information even last week. 
So not only is there a natural evolution of consciousness, there's also light being given and sent. And when you send light, even in a metaphor, you have the option to keep your eyes closed. This is free will. So light may be there and things may be observable, but not unless you wish to open your eyes to observe them. But it's there. And the ones who would want to open their eyes are the old souls who understand the potential and realize that consciousness is energy and it's starting to shift and change. You see it even in leadership around the planet, those who perhaps were warlike and now they've changed their mind. There are so many things you did not expect that are taking place that it really shouts that there are differences occurring. Light is being put in places that will allow you to see the things that now you're going to do something about. All of this is the premise of the series of channels that start to address the frustrations of many who listen to this, who are serious about that which is their old soul in them. Frustrations. Why would an old soul, with the light being turned on, be frustrated at all? So the first one is personal. It's your relationship with others. You lie in bed and you say to spirit, why all of a sudden are the people around me so difficult? <laughs> I hear laughter. Am I hitting home? You already know the answer, but it's not one that solves anything. The answer is a fact. It's an observation and the solution we've given you as well. But why? Why would people around you, especially family, be so difficult all of a sudden? Years ago, I started telling you about the new attributes of karma. First publication, I actually said, drop your karma. You don't need it anymore. It's an old energy function needed for self-correction, for action, for souls to work with one another in a way that made sense. And then in a new energy that's coming, you're not going to need it because you will be in control. We gave the, the example of being in the ocean and karma was the waves that would swat you and, and cause you to go certain directions and do certain things and meet certain people and, and then in a new energy you wouldn't need that because you now had a rudder and you could steer yourself into the safe harbors and not be then subject to the ones of the waves that would hit you. So it was an enablement that we said drop your karma well, that's to the old soul. Let me tell you what happens when an old soul understands dropping of karma and yet the family around them does not. <laughs> Maybe you chose to come in and learn lessons from your mother, from your father, from your, from your siblings. And perhaps that had to do with perhaps disagreements or, or certain kinds of energies that you shared or didn't share. And you grew up with it. But let's say that in this new energy, you've dropped that which is your portion of the karma. And then you go to meet with a family member who still has it. And that family member wants to push all of the buttons that always were available on you. Pushing this one, you got angry. Pushing this one, you got jealous. Pushing this one, you'd leave the room. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody in here. And then suddenly, if you drop your karma, dear old soul, the buttons are gone. Now you go home to your family. And by the way, you will soon. It's called Christmas. 
and out come the fingers to press the buttons and nothing happens. Do you know what the reaction is of someone who has karma with you and you've dropped yours with them? They get angry. You are not responding like you ever did before. In fact, you're sitting there and smiling. That will infuriate people. You're just a little too nice. <laughs> a little perhaps too benevolent, perhaps a little too understanding all of a sudden. First question, are you on a drug? <laughs> and you might say yes. It's called magnificence. I'm starting to awaken to something I never had before. I'm, I am peaceful with myself. And you can push all those buttons you want to, but you'll find the buttons are gone. And you can look right at them and say, I love you too much to have those buttons there anymore. And they may respond and they may not. And these are the issues of today. The difficulty with others has to do with the fact that they have not moved off the old energy peg and you have. It doesn't make you right or wrong dear ones it's simply a fact you have moved energy. In school you move from grade to grade it's not a bias when you study hard and move to the next grade. In the evolvement of the human race it's not a judgment that you learn from lifetime to lifetime and you hit the new energy and you start to evolve and perhaps those around you haven't yet seen or don't want to or had free choice to stay where they are. In some cases you can't stay at all because you realize that those around you are very angry all the time. Sometimes you'll go and spend time with family and realize for the first time all they do is complain. And that's what it is around the table. Here's what's wrong today. I wish they'd fix this. Isn't this awful? How do you feel about it? And you say, I'm just fine, thank you. And they'll say, what's wrong with you? And you'll say, I've discovered the magnificence around me. And you're included in that if you want to be. But I've also discovered that complaining does not help anything. It sets an energy around me. It darkens the room. It's not benevolent. Things are there, but complaining about them, it doesn't help at all. What would help is benevolence around them. Perhaps we can shine a light so much that those things will be catchy into others that you complain about and they'll start changing. And they'll stare at you. And they'll say, you've been to a crayon meeting, haven't you? And you'll say, yes. Some of them understand love. And they'll understand you when you say, I'm finished complaining. I don't judge you. Complain all you want, but it's not for me anymore. And then you're not part of the party. And you're not accepted as well because you won't follow along. Then you're excused early. And you're out of the family. Why are people so difficult? <laughs> what is wrong? The answer, dear ones, I just gave you in the solution, don't try to change them, please. This is not an evangelistic thrust to your end, dear ones. It's a benevolent action of compassion. You show them who you become and let them decide if it's attractive or not. Do not make them wrong. Do not point your finger. Do not tell them you, you wish they were different if they, they, and can't they see light. That'd be the wrong thing to do. Instead, be light. Pretty soon, some of them will see that there has been a change and it's a good one and they like it. Some of them will, will call you back and say, tell me more. Let's go to lunch together. And some of them won't. But the bottom line is you sit in a group of old souls right now that are your new family. Who don't have the karma anymore. And never did with you. And they won't press your buttons. Like the family. It's about changing the paradigm of what family has become. And knowing that you're safe here. And that you're with others who are concerned about the planet in a way that doesn't complain but moves light around.
and understands the whole premise and paradox of reality for the earth may be changing. A more benevolent earth, not a complaining one, not an angry one. It's going to disturb the cultures on the planet who regularly shout at each other. And there are many. And that comes from survival. And there are many. But it has to start somewhere. Let it be here. Let it be in Austin. Let it be with your family at Christmas. Frustrations? Oh, there are many. When I come back with you a little later today, I'll talk about the frustrations of energy, because those are changing. So, dear light worker, you wonder why we call it worker? Now you know. You don't float through this, old soul. You don't float through this. You work through it with help that's always been there. And that help will take your hand and lead you through it. I am crying in love with humanity. And so it is. <laughs>